Jenna Ortega is starring in a new movie with Martin Freeman. It's called Miller's Girl, and the trailer just came out today. I took a look at it, and I was immediately surprised because I didn't think Hollywood would touch a story like this, that they would write it and approve it and put it out there. It's about a student and a professor, and she essentially blackmails her professor with false accusations of the Me Too uh, style. Or she threatens to do so. Or threatens like, to yeah. do so. It's unclear from just the trailer. Um, so here's the synopsis. A talented young writer, Jenna Ortega, embarks on a creative odyssey when her teacher, Martin Freeman, assigns a project that entangles them both in an increasingly complex web. As lines blur and their lives intertwine, professor and protege must confront their darkest selves while straining to preserve their individual sense of purpose and the things they hold most dear. So, here's so there's the, the disclaimer at the end of the trailer. It says there are complex themes that appear in this film. To access resources on some of the subject matter, please visit lionsgate.com slash movies slash Miller's Girl. So <laughs> I went to the website and saw the only resources they were talking about were a bunch of NGOs. One was called Safe Bay, like B-A-E, um, A Call to Men, The Next Generation of Manhood, Me Too, The National Women's Law Center, The Trevor Project, the National Domestic Violence Hotline and other things. And it's because this trailer clearly is touching on multiple themes that are untouchables in Hollywood oh, yeah. now. Like, Age gaps, power dynamics, uh, feminism, and Me Too. Ac according to what I read in the people discussing it, in the script she was 17, in the movie they made her 18. Interesting. Yeah, they, they bumped the age up. So it's like, it's it's legal, but you're still gonna lose your job. Right, so the right? premise I guess is she's at this elite school, she has this professor that gives her an assignment. When she turns it in, he doesn't want to pass her. He thinks that it was inappropriate what she made. And she essentially threatens to blackmail him with a Me Too type of accusation at the school. And I don't know, in most cases, in real in the real world, he would just pass her instead of <laughs> instead. And he but, didn't do he didn't in the story. He didn't do anything with the girl. It was yeah, he, he says uh, if, she, he, if she can make up whatever she wants and ruin my life. So that's to insinuate that nothing happened. And them. she had to be 18. 18. Yep. Because still a student, still it's still uh, it's still not allowed. Yeah, but why mm -hmm. does she have to be? 18 it just seems a little bit if, arbitrary yeah. if, if he never did. Anything. No, yeah, people, if the he, comments it, in the trailer were like people like bumping this age up to eighteen, like it makes it any different. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that is weird. <clears throat> it uh, it does kind of um, call back to a time when the idea, the, the type of characters you could make for women were more three dimensional, where they could be more than just uh, like generic good all the time when a, a when women could be evil could be evil and use her and use sexuality or even just the threat of sexuality as a form of uh of evil right mm -hmm. and that was a very common theme back in the day and that was something that people were willing to do uh it were in the trailer it almost about. looks like she's conspiring with that female friend of hers yeah. on what to do yeah exactly right and uh it just it, it, the idea is now that whereas back in the day when they would make a movie like this they entrusted you the viewer to not be an idiot mm -hmm. and be able to watch something like this and know that uh you know uh yes some women are evil not all women are evil right not all or this some subgroup. accusations are false yes. not all accusations are false exactly but the idea that they're going what to a novel show concept that they're going to show it one story in a sea of me two stories they're going to show the the repercussions of what could happen if it did in fact if it did in fact lead to false allegations requires some type of trigger warning at right. the end yeah and and if a story doesn't have complex themes why would it be worth making, making. or seeing yeah it, and i i guess i am interested to see it do you want to review it? Kind of. Like, I, I like the idea that they're ma they'll make a movie where uh, a character is more than just something that needs to be, someone that needs to be infantilized by the men around her, right? Which is a conversation that's come up recently in a lot of these things. Like, do you want to be a fully fledged adult or do you want to be somebody who's uh, infantilized by the men around them, which has come up in some topics that we've talked about recently? I think, I don't, I think it goes beyond yeah. just men or being, women being infantilized mm -hmm. by men. I 
think that men want to, you know, men want to be infantilized too. So, yeah. I mean, but in this case, this is what actually is happening. the The women are the women of today are being infantilized uh, and made to seem as if they're that they can't do anything wrong. You don't think men are like that too? Uh, I th well, the focus of this story is not that. Fair though. enough. Okay. The the focus of this story is not that. Here's fair, some fair, fair, fair. responses. One said, "I actually don't hate the idea of there being some kind of trigger warning for films." Yeah. Uh, and then they replied, this feels more like discourse avoidance than content warning. Um, like they're trying to cover their asses yes, it does. in advance before people get mad at them for making a story that uh, is sort of out of, it's, it's not in congruence with everything else that Hollywood is putting out. Another said, uh, ah, yes, the complex themes that sometimes teenage students engage in Machiavellian schemes to target and destroy the lives of their older male teachers maybe, for the lulls. Dude, maybe it ends up being <laughs> maybe it ends up being a bait and switch, and it's actually he's got an OnlyFans, and he gets fired for having an OnlyFans like all those female teachers. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, the first of a new Netflix category: movies for people who enjoy tr trigger warnings. Uh. I would like to see more three-dimensional characters beyond just that of good guy, bad guy when it comes to this type of movie. I don't see anything wrong with telling this story. Do you think it looks like it was done well, though? Um, look, like, are I, they even capable of, of making a story like that? I said it reminded me of, uh, of Alicia Silverstone in Crush from it, the yeah, 90s. Or, or, or Sarah Michelle Gellar in Cruel Intentions. That character is legitimately evil. Sarah Michelle Gellar's character is I a never high school that. student, and she's legitimately evil. She, she, she has cruel intentions. She, yes, she essentially <laughs> she bribes her own stepbrother with, uh, with uh, the be with like the option of sex if he can take the virginity of the new girl in school because she doesn't like the new girl in school. She's pretty evil, like from start to finish. She mm -hmm. does awful things the whole movie, but she's a compelling character. She's interesting to watch. I'd rather watch more of that. Uh, there's a reason why movies like that or Wild Things have strong replay value over the years because it's an interesting story. <laughs> another said, this looks like the dark young adult section at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> yeah. uh, another said, in the screenplay, she's 17, and in the movie, she's 18. Not that I'd rather be her, her be underage, but it feels like the thorny subject matter is the point if you're making a movie like this and conceding all this stuff makes the movie worse. So they're not, they're going to approach a good idea for a story and then not go the full length. Yeah, they won't have the guts to actually take it to its logical conclusion. Yeah, and this I, used I to be incredibly that. common in Hollywood mm -hmm. and there are plenty of examples to point to. And there's, I guess it's, is it something about the idea? Because it's not like we're, we're, we've lost on the idea. They still do movies about like <laughs> evil kids. Evil kids is still a thing. Is yeah. this one is this one only not allowed because the topic is sexual and has to do with the idea of consent and the idea of taking responsibility for your own actions and your own behavior as a fully formed adult, not just a not just some type of caricature of what Hollywood says you are. Well, it's funny that this is like considered a dark and gritty yeah. story, but then uh, that Jennifer Lawrence rom-com that yes. just came out this year is about a woman in her mid 30s and a boy he's like 19 years old and his parents are trying to like pawn off his virginity to some random chick on craigslist and it's funny it's it's something to laugh about you could never reverse the sexes in that story and have people respond to it well but people loved that movie yeah. was it no hard feelings did people like that movie I, for, I saw yeah. positive feedback okay. on it. I never saw it myself. I didn't want to see Jennifer Lawrence naked. The guy should have just followed the Mike Pence rule. <laughs> right, Always if he were smart. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, or, or at the very least, he shouldn't be alone with the- This with is going to be the movie that convinces men yeah. everywhere to start implementing the Mike Pence well, rule. But, it, but no, he's like, I'm not married, so it's just like whoever his nearest colleague is. Like, he's like, hello, female teacher. Will you please stand in this room with me while I talk to the student? <laughs> the writer is throwing in I'm 18 10 seconds into the trailer as if it's going to make the next two minutes somehow less weird. I, yeah, I don't think it was weird. I think this is like absolutely the type of story Hollywood used to tell all the time. I don't find it weird. I find it, the fact that they're not willing to actually go all the way with it and commit to the bit more annoying. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, I just, I think it's an original idea for Hollywood in, in the 2020s, yeah. not for Hollywood in general. Um. I don't know. I, I, it might be interesting to review this one. It has the. It runs the risk of being dangerously like overwrought and really, really like uh, melodramatic. 
it seemed that way it, it from the definitely, trailer. Like, yeah. She's definitely uh, chewing <laughs> the scenery a little bit in that one. Like, Give a hint as to what Dead the complex pan, themes the... are because yeah. I have no idea. It could be anything from assault to pregnancy to eating disorders to Donald Trump. <laughs> Oh God! Maybe that's what it is. She finds out he likes Donald, the character likes Donald Trump, and she, she decides blackmails to, she, him. she blackmails him to pass the class and stuff like that. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media, and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.